In 2015, the first human colony is established on the moon. In 2040, a spaceship called Event Horizon is sent out to explore the limits of the solar system, but it disappears near Neptune. It's now 2047 and inside Event Horizon, a disfigured floating body yells at pain. However this is a nightmare by Dr. Weir, who is awakened by his alarm. He immediately grabs a picture of his dead wife Claire and says he misses her before getting to work. He's currently on a space station near Earth, but he receives orders to join the crew of the ship known as Lewis and Clark for a top secret mission. The crew isn't very happy because they were supposed to be going home now after a long journey and traveling so far it's dangerous. Soon Wer arrives and after all the introductions are done, he gets the feeling that Captain Miller doesn't like him. DJ gives Wer an injection to get him ready for the cryogenic tank. Everyone gets in their corresponding tank and goes to sleep. 56 days later, Wer wakes up when he hears Claire saying his name. He comes out of the tank and notices the others are still asleep. The voice continues to whisper things and Wer follows it, getting startled when a hatch opens behind him. Wer makes it to the control room and is shocked to see Claire on the pilot seat saying it's cold. He turns her around and she suddenly appears behind him at the same time, revealing her eyes are missing. At that moment Wer wakes up in the tank from another nightmare and comes out choking on the water. The crew immediately helps him and DJ reminds him he'll feel disorientated for a little while. Over breakfast, Peters watches videos of her son back on Earth, lamenting she's missing his birthday and Christmas. The ship will be arriving to Neptune in around two hours, so Wer finally shares the details of the mission while Miller reminds him nobody is happy to be there. It appears that a radio transmission was picked near Neptune and identified as the missing ship Event Horizon, which the crew has trouble believing. Wer explains the official story behind that ship is a lie, it was actually a secret government project to create a vessel capable of flying faster than light. This was achieved thanks to a device known as the gravity drive invented by Weir. That device could fold space-time to jump across space, which Wer demonstrates with a piece of paper. The mission had been going well but when they finally activated the drive, the event horizon simply disappeared. Then Wer plays the radio transmission they've received, which sounds like lots of screaming and growling. By putting it through filters a human voice can be heard and DJ identifies it as Latin, translating the words to save me. Moments later the ship enters Neptune's turbulent atmosphere and it starts shaking a lot. The pilots work hard to keep control of the vessel and reverse the thrusters to avoid crashing, allowing them to safely reach Event Horizon. The crew is amazed by its huge size as they dock their ship. Stark does a quick scan and learns a few things, the reactor's still hot, there are several small radiation sources but no leaks, the hull's intact yet it doesn't have gravity, and the thermal units are offline so the ship is very cold. The crew could have not survived unless they were in their tanks. She uses a second scan and picks up some life form traces, but she can't pinpoint their location. The readings come from all over the ship, which doesn't make sense. Miller orders Justin and Peters to come with him to search the ship. Wer wants to come too but Miller tells him to stay and guide everyone from the communication station. The team suits up and connects a bridge to the horizon to enter it, using magnet boots to stay on the hatch. They use a tool to force it open and come inside, noticing the place is in a deep freeze and there are ice crystals everywhere. Wer tells them where each corridor goes and the group splits. Miller and Peters discover multiple explosives, so Wer explains they were added to the ship in case it needed to be split in an emergency. Miller reaches the medical bay and finds it empty, but he quickly runs a scan just in case. He screams when someone suddenly touches him, but it's just a floating glove. Peters makes it to the main bridge and finds some blood on the panel, not noticing all the rotting bodies stuck on the wall because of the flickering lights. Wer asks her to get the ship's log, but the CD is stuck in the machine. She pulls to get it out and turns around to find a dead body floating toward her. On the cameras, the rest of the crew notices the body is missing its eyes and its scars look like an animal did it. Meanwhile Justin reaches the engineering decks and must cross a crazy looking bridge to get to the actual room, which has coolant leaking all over the place. He scans the area as he notices a device spinning in the center, realizing this is the gravity drive. When Justin comes closer, the drive stops and the crew back in the ship loses contact with him, seeing only static. The drive opens with bright lights and reveals a mysterious liquid that Justin touches. He reaches inside it and suddenly the drive brings him in, pulling at the rope attached to his ship. At that moment the drive sends out a massive gravity wave that even reaches the Lewis and Clark, causing severe damage to the whole ship and causing the debris to hurt the crew. Soon the shaking ship catches on fire and DJ does what he can with a small fire extinguisher while telling the others to run. All this doesn't stop Cooper from going aboard to rescue his friend. Justin is expelled out of the drive and Cooper catches him before he can float away. In the meantime Miller is also thrown back by the wave and after a few failed tries, he manages to contact Smith, who explains the Lewis and Clark is terribly damaged and on the verge of exploding. Wer points out the Horizon has air and water, so Miller orders everyone to shut down the ship and come aboard the Horizon for safety. Peters activates the Horizon's gravity and thermal units, causing all the crystallization, the coolant, and even the body to crash on the ground. Moments later the crew is gathered in the Horizon and Wer confirms he's brought most of the primary systems online. However Stark discovers the antenna is fried, meaning they have no radio or laser. 
The filters aren't working well either so even if they use the filters from their broken ship, they'll only have breathable air for 20 hours. DJ is checking the damage to their ship's hull and confirms he could repair it, but it'll take a long time. At the medical bay, Justin's vital signs are stable, but he's still unresponsive. Cooper explains what he saw and where his trouble believing it because it would mean the gateway was open. Miller believes Cooper and demands to know what's inside the drive. Where takes the crew to the drive room and explains the rings create an artificial black hole, but it's still perfectly safe. He's sure the gateway can't open by itself so he complains when Miller orders Stark to seal the room, but Miller reminds him people are already hurt so obviously it's not safe after all. At the medical bay, Peters is looking through the horizon's logs when suddenly she hears a weird noise behind her. She grabs a knife and approaches a tent on top of a table, where she's shocked to discover her son with heavily wounded legs. Peters cries before she's startled by DJ and when she looks back, the table is empty. Afterward Peters plays the last entry in the horizon's logs. The crew appeared to be well, but when they turned on the drive, the image became distorted. At that moment the power goes out in the horizon and DJ discovers it's a power drain. Weir and Miller run to the drive and where opens a hatch to check the inner parts. At the medical bay, Justin's body starts shaking and DJ runs to check on him, only to be grabbed by Justin who says the dark is coming before collapsing. Back to Weir, he starts working inside the drive when suddenly he hears Claire's voice again and the lights start pulsing. As Weir panics, Claire appears in front of him and says forever before disappearing and the lights start working normally. In the drive room, Miller sees a fire on the liquid around the rings from which a burning body starts arising. Moments later, the crew gathers again and DJ points out the bad air may be causing hallucinations and impairing judgment. However Peters and Miller swear it felt real, and Miller even says he felt the heat. Smith snaps at Weir and blames his invention for killing the last crew, so the others have to pull them apart to avoid a fight. DJ holds Smith at knife point and reminds him there's no such thing as haunted ships, but Smith tries to punch Weir again. A furious Miller grabs him and yells at him, telling him to go out and work on repairing their old ship. In private, Stark tells Miller that those weird bio-readings plus the hallucinations may mean the horizon is reacting to them in self-defense. It's as if the ship returned with some kind of life force inside, making it sentient. With only 10 hours left of air, Peters returns to the medical bay and discovers Justin is gone. As she looks for him, some lights go out and others start flickering. Suddenly a light explodes behind her and she panics, running out of the room to find the others. As she asks them if they heard that, something begins pounding on the door to the point of bending the metal. Where stares at it rather calmly and whispers open the door before trying to do so. Stark runs to stop him, bending his arm to snap him out of it. At that moment an alarm goes off and they notice someone is in the airlock. Peters realizes it must be Justin and the group runs to find him, however the door closes behind him. While Stark informs Miller and tries to override the lock, Justin asks Peters if she heard it and explains it shows terrible things, like the dark inside of himself from another place. Justin presses a button to open the other end of the airlock and the resulting alarm makes him snap out of it. It'll take a few seconds for it to open, but now his attitude is gone from not wanting to go back to wanting to be saved. The veins in Justin's arms start popping and his body floats up as he has trouble breathing. His eyes begin bleeding and when the door opens, Justin throws up blood before Miller arrives to catch him, pushing him back inside. Stark finally opens the main door and the crew rushes to give Justin medical care. Meanwhile Wer sits around, feeling how the drive is reaching out to him. Moments later, Justin has been stabilized and put inside a tank. They have only four hours left of clean air, so Miller asks Peters to work on the Horizon's logs to discover what's happening. Stark asks about what Justin said and Wer thinks it was nothing, so a furious Miller follows him out to demand answers. Wer finally admits lots of things are happening that he doesn't understand and Miller walks away. In another corridor, Miller hears a voice asking for help. He tries reminding himself it's not real but he suddenly has a vision of an old crewmate being brutally killed. Miller goes to DJ and shares the story of how he had to leave a crewmate to die during his early working days. He never shared this story with anyone, so the ship somehow knows their deepest fears. In return DJ tells him that he's fixed his translation from earlier and the message actually says save yourself from hell. If the drive can take a ship across the limits of the universe, the duo wonders if it can reach even hell itself. At that moment Cooper finishes fixing the Lewis and Clark, but the first test goes wrong and they need 20 more minutes to plug a hole. Peters and Stark finish going over the remaining logs and are horrified to watch how the previous crew was ruthlessly murdered. A bleeding man smiled as he held his own eyes on his hands. Seeing this, Miller announces they must leave. Were protests, saying the mission isn't over, however Miller reminds him they came to rescue a crew and they're all dead, so it's indeed over. He'll allow them to download all the Horizon's information, but once they're far enough, he'll launch missiles to destroy it. At that moment Stark informs Miller that the bioscan has gone off the scale, meaning the drive is draining power from the rest of the ship. Miller orders everyone to leave the horizon as fast as possible while Wer comments the ship won't let them do so. He says he's already home before disappearing in the darkness. In the drive room Parkers and Smith are collecting as many carbon dioxide tanks as they can. 
Smith quickly leaves, but Peters hears the drive and starts seeing her son again. Lost in her mind, she runs right into the core and climbs a ladder, following her son. After having a vision of her own dead body, a door opens to reveal her son and Peters tries to approach him, only to fall down a hole. Her body falls out of the drive and she dies while looking at her kid. Moments later Weir enters the room and finds Peter's body. Suddenly she hears Claire's voice and finds himself back on the bathroom of the first space station. He tries apologizing for being away for work for so long, but Claire gets in the tub and self-deletes like it happened in real life. Then Claire appears in front of him with no eyes and says now they can be together forever before poking his eyes, causing him to scream in pain outside the hallucination too. While Cooper finishes repairing the other ship, Smith notices we're exiting the horizon and informs Miller, who has discovered one of the horizon's explosives is missing. Smith starts searching through the equipment and notices an ID with blood on it. Behind it he finds the explosive and immediately tries turning it off, but it's too late. An explosion happens and Smith dies. The shockwave blows Cooper away from the hull as well, and now he's floating around on a piece of metal. He decides to empty his air tank, hoping it's strong enough to send him back to the ship. At the medical bay, DJ is gathering supplies when Miller informs him of the latest deaths, so he tells him to kill Weir on sight. Suddenly an eyeless Weir appears behind him and grabs him to start throwing him around. Then he puts him on a table and uses surgery tools on him. Miller hears this on the intercom and runs to the medical bay, only to find a dead DJ hanging from the ceiling with his gut spilled on the table. Afterward Miller arms himself and goes looking for Weir. He finds Stark unconscious on the ground and wakes her up, but before he can carry her away, Weir appears on the command chair. He says the ship opened a gateway to another dimension of pure evil and when it came back, it was alive. Then he starts up the horizon to re-enter that evil dimension and Stark tries attacking him to stop him, however Weir easily tosses her aside. Weir gets the gun and threatens Miller at the same time Cooper appears on the window, so Weir shoots at him instead. Cooper quickly moves away and Miller jumps as Weir shoots again, destroying all the machines. The window explodes and starts sucking out all the objects in the room. Miller slides around but manages to hold on while Weir's chair breaks off its base. Weir also tries to hold on and even manages to bend a floor panel, however the pressure is too much and he gets blown off into space. The same almost happens to Miller, who finds a rope and uses it to move into another room. Then he grabs a tool to keep the door open and reaches out for Stark, grabbing her and bringing her in right before the tool breaks and the door closes. At that moment they hear an alarm at the airlock and the duo gets ready to fight, but it's just Cooper. The team agrees to blow up the corridor and separate the Fordex as a lifeboat to escape, leaving the drive behind. While Miller runs to activate the remaining explosives, Cooper and Stark go to the Fordex to start sending an emergency beacon. Suddenly the ship starts filling with blood and a capsule breaks, causing the blood to flood a room as well. Stark is pushed away by the liquid but Cooper manages to save her. In the main corridor, Miller sees his old crewmate, who blames him for his death before shooting fire at him. Miller has no choice but to run into the drive room, jumping right before the door closes. A flame manages to come through, causing an explosion that lights the whole room on fire. The fiery man suddenly appears inside and pushes Miller, causing him to drop the detonator before revealing he's not the old crewmate, he's actually a very scarred were who claims the shop brought him back. He grabs Miller's head and shows him all the horrific things he could do to the crew. Miller finds a tank in the water and starts hitting Weir with it, however Weir overpowers him and throws him away. As the gateway opens, Miller reaches for the detonator and presses the button, activating the bomb. That area of the ship starts exploding and the horizon is effectively split in two. Cooper and Stark get to escape in the Fordex while the drive is absorbed by a black hole that quickly closes. The duo goes to sleep inside the tanks and 72 days later, they're found by a rescue team. Stark screams when she notices one of the rescuers is Weir, however this is also a hallucination and the rescuers assure her she's safe. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.